Welcome everybody to another video of Vinyl Attic. This is Chili, and on this day in rock, November 1st, 1994, Nirvana released MTV Unplugged in New York. Now before I get into this, don't forget to hit the like button, comment on this video, share this video, and if you still haven't, please subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell for updates. So now that's out of the way, now, this live performance from Nirvana has been said to be one of the greatest live albums ever. Um, as far as their music is concerned, um, I do love this album. And um, sometimes people tend to like the electrified Nirvana more, uh, other than this kind of funeral music. But um, as far as the format for Nirvana, I think that Kurt really took this format, this concept of Unplugged and took it to a different level. Um, you know, he was approached by MTV a couple of times in which he turned him down. He was not impressed by what he saw other bands performing on MTV, just sitting on wooden stools and singing their songs. And, you know, there was nothing to it. It, it sounded, it, some of it sounded horrible, you know. Um, like, like bands like Pearl Jam, it didn't really um, add anything different to the music. It was just, they're just playing these songs on acoustic guitars. And so what Nirvana did was really restructure some of their own material, but they did, well, Kurt did, he had some demands regarding uh, if he that he will play Unplugged. And one of his list of demands was that he was not just gonna play his music, but he was he wants to do cover songs, he wanted to have guests, and not all the instruments will be unplugged. Some of them were electrics, such as an electric guitar on The Man Who Sold the World. So the old list of demands were you were kept. He said, yes, okay, you could do whatever you want. And so he was free to have the meat puppets on board. He got a cello player to do some of the, um, re redoing some of the, old, some of the songs such as Dumb and uh, All Apologies. He had um, Pat Smear. This is the first time they, we kind of saw Pat Smear in a whole live performance and the, the, the four piece of Nirvana. And of course, the, um, the set design, you know, because prior to this, it seemed like everybody, it, the, the stage setup was plain and the set designer said, wow, you know, he wants these candles, he wants, Kurt wants, you know, these flowers, it looks like a funeral. And Kurt was like, exactly, you know, and what it did was he made, not only did he have a place for his music and it made every artist after Nirvana had to step it up because it was it was like wow you know what he did on here is just like take this um, concept of just playing your music unplugged but then he also um, you know it, it sparked a creative side to him to not just play them unplugged but you know reinterpret them you know having other instruments involved playing the the brushes you know, even Dave had to play with brushes instead of just regular drumsticks. And, you know, so it was really cool what they did. And um, this wasn't, this performance on the day before wasn't even going to see, may have not even been filmed because Kurt was going to back out due to some bad drug withdrawals that he was going through. But somehow he did manage to pull through and this performance is forever immortalized on Unplugged in New York. Now that is my video. What are your thoughts on this? What is your, give me a comment. Would you rather just hear Nirvana, um, you know, with distortion and, you know, really loud, really fast screaming and, um, you know, pits and that kind of thing and mosh pits or, you know, is this one okay? you know, this kind of funeral music. Um, you let me know, leave a comment below, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.